Well, I didn't expect to be talking about distant galaxies again so soon. So this is just a quick reflection on a brand new paper, not the usual deep dive. Just weeks ago, we were looking at galaxies at a redshift of 25, already pushing Lambda CDM to its breaking point. Back then, theorists could still cling to fixes. Maybe stars were forming with impossible efficiency. Why not throw in a universe seeded with primordial black holes? None of it was convincing, but it just about kept the model on life support. That should have been the frontier, the place where galaxies begin to vanish into the darkness. But JWST hasn't stopped there. It's now turned up something even stranger, a candidate at a redshift of 32, called Capituro. Capituro isn't just another early galaxy candidate. At a redshift of 32, the universe would have been less than about 100 million years old, still trapped in its so-called dark ages, long before galaxies, even before the very first stars. Standard cosmology says the sky should have been completely black. And yet, here it is, shining from that impossible time. This is the threshold where the usual patches break down. No amount of hand-waving about star formation efficiency is going to save you here. Now, it's fair to say astronomers don't just jump straight to a distant galaxy when they see weird dropouts like this. The first step is always to check the boring stuff. Foreground stars, brown dwarfs, dusty galaxies at lower redshift. Only once those are ruled out do they entertain the extreme idea of a truly ancient galaxy. But Capituro is so odd that after testing everything, they were left with just three possibilities, each less likely than the last, and each with consequences that are, well, awkward to say the least. The first and most favoured explanation is also the most extraordinary, a galaxy at redshift 32. The data, that sharp break, the rising spectrum, matches this interpretation best. But if that's true, it means galaxies were already shining in the universe's dark ages, when no stars should yet exist. Another possibility places it much closer, a brown dwarf or even a free-floating planet wandering our own galaxy. But to fit the data, it would need to be colder and fainter than any such object ever seen, sitting hundreds or even thousands of parsecs away. That would break records on its own, and not in a tidy, comfortable way. The last option imagines it as a lower redshift galaxy pretending to be something distant. With extreme dust obscuring or an unusually sharp Barmer break, but those models struggle badly to reproduce Capituro's colours, and they demand exotic conditions we've never observed anywhere else. So, while the galaxy explanation is the favourite, every path leads to something extraordinary. And <laughs> If the data is right, if Capitura really is a galaxy at redshift 32, then we've hit the endgame for Lambda CDM. Because this isn't just too early for galaxies, it's too early for stars themselves. Either the model mutates into something unrecognisable, stuffed with new, untested physics, or we finally admit it's time to look beyond the Big Bang framework itself. For decades, cosmology has assumed that point would never come. But with JWST, we might be watching it arrive in real time. Well, who knows, maybe I'll be back sooner than we expect, talking about a galaxy at a redshift of 45? <laughs>